What's up and welcome to a fresh new video. We have a lot to talk about. Check it out, when it comes to setting up a camera, there's a ton of opinions out there. Nice thing about Sony is that they give us a lot of options, which is great, but can also be a not so nice thing about Sony because you don't know where to start, you don't know what to do. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through all of my menu and custom settings that I use on the A7S III for my shooting. This is what has worked well for me, and I think it's gonna give you a really good jump start on getting your camera set up. And make sure you stick around to the end because when I start going through the memory recall settings, you're gonna be like, oh, well that makes sense, I didn't, that's, that's how you do that. Got it, that's gonna save me a ton of time. Now before we get started, I do wanna let you know that I'm not gonna be going through every single menu item in this camera. There are a lot of them and they're all good and they're all important. I'm just gonna be prioritizing the ones that are most important to get you set up on your A7S III. But I'm gonna link a video up top here by Donna Did It, who has gone through every single item exceptionally well. Really good resource, highly encourage you to check that one out. And also, I only have two cameras, A7S III I'm shooting with right now, A7 7.3 is the secondary camera. I'm fortunate to be able to have two cameras, but a video like this, ideally, I would have three, where when I'm going through the menu system, there'd also be another camera of me talking so that we could have more than just a still shot of the back screen of the A7S III, but that's the setup for today, and we're gonna make it valuable regardless. We're gonna be specifically focused on all my settings for video on the A7S III in particular. I will be dropping a video very soon about my setup for photos on the A7S III, which a lot of people are not buying this camera for photos, I actually like it a lot for photography, but we'll save that for a future video. We're gonna break this video down into two major sections. The first section being the pre-setup, the foundational setup, the whatever I'm gonna call it up on screen here. But section one is things we gotta get right in the menu system before we try to set our memory recall. And the second section is going to be that, how we set up our memory recall buttons. And look, if none of this is making sense, I promise it'll all make sense very soon. And also within these two major sections, we're also gonna have some subcategories built in to each of them, so try and keep up. All right, knowing how much we have to get into, we might as well dive in. It's gonna be a long one. Hope you got a fresh cup ready. I know I do, and I got a refill on the way. So I will see you in the menu system. All right, so here we are in the A7S III, and as I mentioned, we're gonna get into this first section here, which gets into all of the pre-settings we need to do before we get into the memory recall. Now, first thing we wanna do is we're just gonna turn the dial up top into the regular movie mode. And we're about to set some foundations here that are gonna make a lot more sense when we get into the actual memory recall. First thing we wanna do, let's just jump into the actual menu here. And on the first tab, what we're gonna change is the following. We're gonna leave all of these first three alone. We'll get to some of those later. I wanna go to shooting mode, exposure mode, and make sure that you're in manual exposure. If we're sitting in any of these other ones, we're gonna have a problem because we're not gonna be able to set certain things like the shutter speed or the aperture. It's just gonna to be tough to do all of that. So exposure mode, make sure that's set to manual. And on that note, also make sure that your exposure control type is set to PASM, otherwise you can't get into manual mode. So those are the first two. Next piece, we're gonna scroll past all of these. A lot of these things we're scrolling past, don't get stressed out. We'll come to a lot of them a little bit later in some of the custom settings and the function settings. In shooting display, I like to have my grid lines on for the rule of thirds. I also prefer to have a diagonal, that's a preference. Last, emphasize during recording, display during recording, which is kind of cool. That's how you get those red lines on the outside of the screen there. So if you're wondering how to find that, that's how to get that. And you can also see here on my screen, let me just turn this up a little bit. You can see those diagonal lines and the rule of thirds there on the grid. So just preference on that. Next piece we're gonna adjust, we're going to go into this exposure and color. Now we're going to jump past 
all of these and we're gonna get into white balance. Again, don't stress out, we'll get back to some of those in a minute. And the one thing I set in here is just going to be the shockless white balance. I bring that down to slow. And number five here is gonna be this color and tone dynamic range optimizer I turn off for video. Leave it on for photo, but turn it off for video. And picture profile is definitely something we'll come back to in a moment. We'll come back to zebras in a moment as well. Everything in focus, incredibly important, but also these are gonna be major points for our function and custom buttons. So we'll leave those alone. Playback, I'm not gonna touch. Now this one's actually a little bit interesting. What I like to do here, there's a lot of smartphone functions and things that we could get into. Typically I'll use that for photo. What I like to do though, is I like to go into under network option, airplane mode, I turn this on. And when that's on, it'll be indicated by the airplane up top there. I like having that on because the only reason it wouldn't be on is if you need to have a Wi-Fi connection to your smartphone for any reason to transfer files or to see the screen. And uh, if you have airplane mode on, you can save a lot of battery. And trust me, you don't need the functions like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for almost every scenario. So airplane mode on is a good way to save some battery. All right, so that actually wraps up all the menu settings that we're going to change. Now, I know there's a lot left to the imagination. We'll hit all of those with the custom buttons and the function which is really where we start to take this thing to the next level. But I do wanna show you there's some value in setting up your menu. How to set up your menu is you go to this star up top and you go to my menu and you're gonna scroll all the way down and you can add items. Then you go back into your menu options and you can bring those back and highlight or prioritize the ones that you want in your menu. And just to show you the ones that I have set up, the reason I have these here is because I'm unable to map them in my function menus or my custom buttons, or at least I don't prioritize them in those settings. So I put them back in this My Menu so they're easy to find. I put file format, movie settings, custom key, function menu, custom key for photo. This is the big one we're gonna get into. This is section two, setting your memory buttons, formatting your SD card, AF with shutter, that's good for photos, control with smartphone, one thing I use for photos there, monitor brightness, viewfinder brightness, and then my S and Q settings. So that's my menu. You can set yours up however you see fit, but that's the one that I use. All right, let's get into the good stuff and talk about our function menu options. Completely customizable here. And I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to show you how to set this. I'm then gonna just take you through a tour real time of what mine looks like and how it performs. So as I mentioned, I have my function menu settings mapped into my highlighted my menu. So I'm just gonna go right right down here to my function menu settings. This is how we actually change what's displayed on screen. Up top here, these are for photo modes, and down here, these are for video modes. Again, very important to make sure you're actually in your video settings up top. So how you would map these, let's say you want to change this one, you would just click on it, and now you have the options to go in and remap it. So I'm gonna show you exactly what mine are and how I have them set up. First thing I have here is going to be my audio levels, just to crank these around and put them either low if I have like a lav mic hooked up or I'll bring them up really high if I need to sync the audio for any reason. Next thing I have on is face priority and autofocus. So just being able to choose if I want that on or off which is then indicated right there in the bottom left. Next one I have in my function menu is going to be peaking display and I always have this set to on because it's only active when I go into manual focus mode. So the second I go manual, my peaking display turns on, which you can see those little red dancing ants on that 20 millimeter G Master lens. So peaking display, frame rate for my S and Q settings, Zebra display, one of my most used pieces here. I have the zebra level, I'm sorry, this is zebra levels, not zebra display. Zebra levels in the function menu, zebra display is actually mapped to a custom button, which we'll get into in a moment. Face priority and multimetering, don't use this super often, but when I do, it's nice to have. My autofocus transition speed in here, this is how fast the camera is going to move its focus after it chooses a new subject. Audio display level, whether I want that on or off, when it's off, it goes away, what used to be right here. And then when I turn it back on, you can see it there. So I mostly use that if I'm not needing to monitor the audio. I just know I need audio. I'll crank 
the audio up to like typically at 18 and then I'll turn this off. I know I'm good. I'm just using the audio from the camera to sync audio later on in post. Autofocus subject shift sensitivity. We're going to come back to this one a lot, but this one I have, this is essentially how fast the camera recognizes a new subject. Steady shot, whether we want that in active mode, standard or completely off. Prioritize record media just allows you to pick which SD you want to have as the priority SD and then peaking color. Sometimes I'll be in situations where I'm manually focusing and let's say that I, uh, I don't like the color that's showing up. I can just grab that and change the color. Maybe it's the same color of the subject. So that's just a quick fix there. Now, one question you might have is in my function menu, why don't I have any of the touch screen features set? And that's because if you tap this icon, your touch icon in the upper right here, I'm just trying to tap and get out of the way. You can see that changing. It has three settings. Every time you tap it, it just cycles through. So I can turn it off completely where I touch, nothing happens. I can go into the regular, just choose your focus point via touch, or I can set to the spot tracking and I can pick a subject and it'll track that. That's why I don't have any of my touch features set to the actual function menu. All right, let's run through how I've mapped all my custom buttons. So how to get there, I have mapped my custom key set up under my menu. And when I'm in there, what we see here is all these features that we got to talk through. So there's a lot here. This essentially, as you can see the movie icon in the upper left, we're setting up all of our buttons that correspond on the graphic on the right to what they do. This is very, very important from a workflow and speed efficiency perspective when you're shooting. So let's take a look at how I have mine set up. I'm gonna run through this pretty quick, but then we're gonna go back to the camera and I'll tap the actual buttons that we just mapped and we can see how they actually work. Under this first one here, my control wheel, these numbers are not in reference to the actual C1 button, for example, it's a little confusing. So you just gotta look at what's highlighted and then you can see what's highlighted over there on the right and see what the camera's talking about. So this first one, my control wheel, I have set to ISO. Yours, if you're getting into the camera for the first time, might be set to something different. Just click on it and then you can change what it's being set to. So just choose and you have a bunch of options. So ISO you can find on tab two under exposure and it's right there for ISO. So just jumping back here, I just wanna emphasize that you set up your custom menu at least to some of the features that I have here, so that way you can find them easily and follow along. So back into it, custom key settings, that first one's gonna be ISO. Number two, which is the AEL button, not the C2 button, the AEL button. I have that set to auto white balance lock toggle. Number three is my AF on, which is the AF on button, which is nice that that syncs up. Number four, which is C1, is my white balance. Five, this is how I'm selecting between my monitor and my viewfinder. And number six, which is the trash button or the custom four button I have set to gamma display assist. Again, we're gonna see what all this looks like in real life, but if you want the quick hack, you can just map yours the same ones I have and you'll be in good shape. Next piece, this is actually the joystick, which you can actually push in and it acts as a button. I have that set to focus area. I'll show you why in a minute. Number two, which is the center button, I have set to zebra display select. Three and four, I don't have these set because like we said earlier, I have my, my wheel set to ISO and when these are set as well, sometimes you push down and it jumps out of ISO and does whatever those two are set to. So I leave those alone. And number five, my down button, when I press down on my wheel, that is going to bring up my picture profile options. All right, top buttons. Number one, which is the red button on the A7S III. Nice new red outline, it's pretty cool. Leave that alone for movie shooting. Number two, this is how I select between autofocus and manual focus. Some lenses, I don't have an actual manual to autofocus switch, so it's nice to have that when you're using those types of lenses. And this lens in particular does have a fifth option here for a custom button and I use that for IAF, but don't use that super often. All right, let's take a look at how these buttons actually respond. So as I mentioned earlier, this C4 button, this is just gonna be my gamma display assist and that just toggles that on and off, which is nice because you can actually see if you're shooting in log what a transferred file might look like when it has an actual color correction LUT on it. So that's nice to have. Control wheel, as we mentioned, this is ISO. So it's really easy and fast to change what your ISO is. Which also the center button is how I toggle my zebras on and off. 
So that's nice to have just to know that I can just select that and then I can change my ISO and get my exposure. So I like having those two together. When I push up, this just changes my display. I left that as the default. And when I press down, that's when I bring up my picture profile options. Function menu is the function menu. This joystick, so when I tap this in, I get all of my focus options. So let's go ahead and pick on this spot. Let's go with large. So I'm gonna select that and now my joystick also allows me to move my focus point around so I can select what type of focus I want and then I can move it around with the joystick. And as I said, my AF on button, this is how I can tell the camera to focus faster, which you'll be in sometimes in situations where you need it to focus faster. So that AF on button just pulls focus quickly. My AEL button is my auto white balance lock, which you're seeing that in the bottom right turn on and off. I did do a video recently on S-Log3 color grading that I'll link up above here that talks about this button in particular and why it's so valuable. Uh, my back wheel, this is my shutter speed and my front wheel is my aperture. C1 button, as we talked about, this is how I can get into different white balance settings. And one thing when you're on a custom set like 5600, that auto white balance lock won't work. You gotta be in auto white balance to toggle that on and off. C3, this is how I just toggle between my viewfinder and my monitor. Probably can't see through the viewfinder on this angle, but when I click that, everything gets processed to the viewfinder and then toggle back to the monitor here. Nice to have for like nail and focus or if you're in like a super sunny situation. C2, this is my manual focus toggle, which you can see that over here. And you can also see some of that red peaking picking up on that Zeiss lens. And on the far right, that record button acts as the record button, pretty simple. All right, last part, we're almost there. We're gonna go into section two, which is our memory recall settings. This is actually a pretty fast process. What we wanna do is we're gonna leave our dial in movie mode. Leave it in movie mode. Don't go to custom set one, two, or three on your memory recall. We'll get to that in a second. We're essentially gonna be creating the foundation for the camera so that when we get to custom set one, two, and three, we have all the same menu features that we just took all that time setting up that those transfer over to one, two, and three. Sometimes when you jump into custom set one and then maybe you go into your menu and you, for example, maybe you go into exposure and you turn on your dynamic range. Let's say you turn that to on. Can't have that when my picture profile is on, but let's say you were to turn that on and then you go into, and then you save your custom memory recall and then you go into custom recall two and it's all of a sudden it's off. So what we just did in the menu when we're under the regular movie mode is set all of those as our new defaults. So that way they don't change when we get into some of these memory recalls. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit complicated, but regardless, here's the process. You're gonna stay in movie mode we don't need to go into the menu items we just changed, but what we do need to do is we need to change some of the small things like shutter speed and aperture. We're gonna set this first one as if we wanted it to be perfect for custom setting number one. So let's make custom setting number one our 24 frames a second talking head style shot. First thing I would do, let's go into the function menu and let's get all of these set. Typically what I'll do is I'll leave my, I'll put my audio record levels at 18 or somewhere in the middle because I'm likely gonna be having an external microphone and I just want the camera audio to be used to sync that later. For a talking head style video, I definitely want my face autofocus prioritized. Uh, peaking, it's probably gonna be autofocus, I'm not worried about that. S and Q frame rate, I'm not worried about. Zebra level set to 90 if I'm using S-Log3. Again, that color grade video I'll link up here is why that's so important. Face metering is not a concern. This is a big deal though. Autofocus transition speed, I'm gonna set that to three for this talking head style custom set that we're making. And if you're wondering why I set it to three and why I set my autofocus to one locked on for this style of shot, I'll link a separate video up here where I talked about where Matty Hapoya maybe got this a little bit off and some ways to fix that. Audio display level, I would leave on. Steady shot, I would leave that just in standard. I'm gonna prioritize slot number one and peaking doesn't matter. Now in regards to all of my custom buttons for the gamma display assist, I would leave that on. Picture profile, I would leave in picture profile two for S-Log3, which back in my S-Log3 color grading video that I linked earlier that, you'll see why I have picture profile two set to S-Log3. 
In terms of ISO, I'm gonna probably turn this all the way down to the base ISO for that picture profile. I know this scene is underexposed, but again, we're trying to make the ideal default settings when we put our camera into memory recall one, exactly what it kicks back to. This is going to be a 24 frames a second default. So we're gonna bring our shutter to double the frame rate at one over 50. Aperture, I'm just gonna bring that as low as possible, depending upon the lens that might change, but as low as possible for the baseline custom one setting. I'm not gonna want auto white balance on this. I'm gonna go into a 5600 Kelvin set because typically for talking heads, controlled environment for me and I know my key light's a 5600. Next would be codex. So under menu, as I said earlier in my menu, I have file format is number one. I'm gonna be turning that to XAVC HS4K. My movie setting on that, I'm gonna be in 24P like we talked about, and I'm gonna be in 420 10-bit. I'll link another one of my videos up top here as to why I choose that as my main codec. All right, so everything we just did was because we wanted to make the ideal baseline setting for our talking head style or our memory recall one button. So how we do that is we're gonna to go to menu, camera set memory. We're gonna set this to custom setting number one. We're also going to set this to custom setting number two. And we're also going to set this to custom setting number three. Now, the reason we do that is that we have the same, and this is the point I was talking about earlier that's gonna blow your mind. The reason we do that is we have the same baseline foundational settings for all of our memory recall one, two, and three. So on the camera, when I switch over to memory recall number one, all those settings we just set up are there. They're also there for memory recall number two, and they're also there for memory recall number three. Why does that matter? Because now we have all the menu settings that we ran through earlier, all the function menus, all the custom buttons, all the dynamic range, everything is consistent across one, two, and three. And now all we have to do in custom number two and three is change some of the settings that we want to customize. So let's do that now. We're on memory recall one here, which you can see in the upper left, which is everything we just set up. This will be our talking head style memory recall setting. And when we get to the actual scene, we might find out like, I gotta bump the exposure up, easy. We just spin the wheel and we're done. Or maybe you're like, I, I'm gonna go back over to auto white balance for this scene, done. So even though you set up a memory recall button, there's still a pretty good chance that you're gonna have to get in here and customize it depending upon the scene that you're in. So let's go to memory recall number two, which we already transferred all that information over, but let's say we want this to be our slow motion. So all we need to do now is go to menu and we're gonna go back under file format. I'm gonna leave that at XAVC HS 4K. I'm gonna go to movie settings and I'm gonna change this to 120 frames a second and we're gonna get that 420 10-bit file coming out of that. And next, we're gonna bring our shutter to 250 because we gotta double our frame rate. Next thing I would do for a slow motion setting, I would go to my function menu and I would turn up my auto focus subject shift sensitivity to something a little bit more responsive that we're in slow motion. We're probably doing something that's moving fast and I want the transition speed to pick up as well. Next thing I would do is I would turn the face off for this custom setting because we're probably not tracking a face if we're in slow motion. And then that is set, I would go back into menu, I would go into memory recall, this is our custom two setting, and now we're done. So when we go into custom setting number one, we have what we did earlier, which is our talking head style. When we go to custom two, this is now a very, very similar setting except for we're set up for 120 frames a second at 250 with faster autofocus. Face priority is turned off. Okay, so for my custom set number three, when we click over to number three, because we copied all of those settings over earlier, it's the same setup right now as what custom set number one is set to. So this would be a setting that I would use for my very quick shoots, like something I need to get done quick. I don't wanna worry about color grading, not super concerned about quality. First thing I would do for my picture profile, I have my picture profile one, which is my very basic neutral setup. Black level is zero, gamma is still black gamma and knee 
I leave alone. Color mode I set to pro, saturation minus two. Leave everything else alone besides detail, make sure it is set to zero. So I would select picture profile one. I would then go into, I would leave everything the same as my custom setup number one, because my quick video shoots are typically something that's gonna be a talking head style shoot. So I leave all of those other settings alone, such as like our focus, we wanna leave that as that locked on option that we talked about earlier. But I do wanna change my codec. I don't wanna worry about having the most quality out of this camera in this situation. Again, I want this to be a little bit faster. So I would shoot XAVC S 4K, I would bring Bring my frame rate down to 24 and I would shoot 4208 bit which it hurts my soul even to put this camera that's capable of so much in those settings but this is for something quick and all I gotta do at that point is just lock that off by going to memory recall set that as number three we're all set there so when we go back into custom set number one all of those menu items we set up earlier, those are gonna be consistent across all three of these. Custom number one would be our high quality talking head style. All these things are set like we talked about. Number two would be a very similar setup to number one, except for we have optimized certain things for slow motion. And number three would be set to get it done quick. Don't worry about the quality so much, just get the video produced. And that is how I set up my A7S III for video. How we do? How many pages of notes do you have? Let me know in the comments down below. Two, three, zero. And also if you have any suggestions on how you set up your A7S III, drop that in the comments below. If you have any questions or you want me to expand upon any of this in a future video, drop that below as well. I've been putting out a lot of videos about the A7S III, which is great. I'm gonna continue to do so, but I'm also gonna start to be producing some videos around other topics in the creative realm, getting into some photography, getting into some Lightroom, getting into some Photoshop, maybe some editing in Premiere. I also wanna do an iPhone 12 Pro when they drop the RAW, see how those files edit. So a lot of plans on the way, but hey, that's gonna do it for me. My name is Sean DeWispeler. This channel is all about the skills behind the art of creativity me being full-time in the fitness industry, it's also always gonna have a bit of a fitness feel to it. So if that's something that you're into, hit the subscribe button down below. I'm having a lot of fun making these, so there's certainly much more on the way, but I'll see you in the next video. Take care, see ya. Wait, one more thing, one more thing. I ordered something. Can you guess? Can you guess? Let me give you a hint. XAVC HS42 two 10 bit. No, you don't got it. I ordered the Apple MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Yes, I'm going to be swapping out my spec'd out 19 MacBook Pro. And I'm going to try this M1 chip out and I think it's going to be able to decode that codec really well, which would be fantastic. So probably some videos coming out on that soon and how the Apple MacBook Pro M1 chip can handle A7S III footage, particularly in Premiere. So be on the lookout for that. All right, for real, see ya.